Hello, and thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson Number 9 on Absolute Value and Step Functions. Before we begin, let me remind you that you can get a worksheet and a homework set that go along with this video by clicking on the video's description or by visiting our website at www.emathinstruction.com. As well, don't forget about our handy QR codes at the top of each page. Those QR codes, there they are. <laughs> the QR code at the top of each page will allow you to use your cell phone or tablet to get right to this video. All right, let's begin. Now, we've been studying linear functions for quite some time. In the last lesson, we even studied some strange lines, horizontal and vertical. There are some functions that are built off of linear functions, and the two that we're going to be looking at today are known as absolute value functions and step functions. But let's first start with absolute value. The absolute value gives the size or the magnitude of a number. So what we want to do is find each of the following. Now you've worked with absolute value before, so this should be reviewed. These symbols mean absolute value. All right, and they're actually quite simple. The absolute value of 7 is simply equal to 7. So the idea of the size of a number is it tells you how big it is. So, you know, in, in a certain sense, negative 7 and 7 are the same size, right? They're not the same number, but they're the same size. Likewise, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Now, the absolute value of 6, though, is just 6. Okay, and the absolute value of 0 is 0. So for a lot of students, it boils down to this. If you're taking the absolute value of a positive number, or 0, nothing special happens. You just get that number. But if you're taking the absolute value of a negative, you get the positive version of it. Or better yet, you get to multiply the number by negative 1, flipping it from negative to positive. One thing is certainly true. When you find the absolute value of any number, the result is always either positive or zero. It cannot be negative. Now, absolute value has a lot, lot of um, interesting applications, and we're going to see some of them this year, but a lot more of them in the following years, especially Algebra 2. I'm going to clear this text out, and then we're going to take a look at the graph of the simplest absolute value function. All right, let's take a look at it. It's kind of neat. So the simplest absolute value function is literally y equals the absolute value of x. So don't let the f of x scare you. Don't let that, that happen, right? This is just y equals the absolute value of x. Letter A, this should be simple enough. Why don't you go ahead and do it, remind you of what function notation means. All right, let's go through it. Remember, just function notation, when it says evaluate f of negative 7, what that means is put the negative 7 in whenever there's an x. Absolute value of negative 7 is 7. Great. So f of negative 7 is 7. f of 4 is the absolute value of 4. And that's just 4. All right, so easy, easy, easy. Letter B asks us to fill out the table below and graph the function over this interval. This should be extremely quick. And the reason why is that literally, in each case, the output is the absolute value of the input. So for instance, the absolute value of three, negative 3 is 3. That, of course, gives us the point negative 3, 3, which is right here. Then, if I do the absolute value of negative 2, I get 2, giving me the point negative 2, comma 2 right here. Then I do the absolute value of negative 1 and I get 1, so I get the graph negative 1, 1. The absolute value of 0, 0, giving me the point 0, 0. Then the absolute value of 1 is 1 again, giving me the point 1, 1. The absolute value of 2 is 2, giving me the point 2, comma 2. And the absolute value of 3 is 3, giving me 3, comma 3. And what we get is one of the most classic graphs in math, the absolute value graph, which essentially looks, oh, I just totally botched that. But it essentially looks like the letter V. 
All right. In fact, it's two linear functions put together coming into a classic V. We study this graph a lot in calculus because it has what's known as a corner, and corners are all sorts of a problem, but that's not for us now. Okay, let's take a look at letter C. What is the minimum value of the function on this interval? Should be pretty easy, but let's rem remember some terminology. Minimum value of the function. That's the minimum y value. And of course, the smallest y value occurs right down here, and it's y equals 0. Make sure to have that y equals. Okay, that way you'll really know that it's y. Letter D asks, over what domain is f of x equals the absolute value of x increasing? Now remember, when we're talking about a function increasing or decreasing, it means that we always read it from left to right. Let me change the color really quick. So if I read this graph from left to right, I'm obviously decreasing, 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 decreasing. Then I hit x equals 0 and I start to increase. So I am increasing either on x greater than or equal to 0. That's a good way to do it. Or if you use interval notation from 0 to infinity. That's it, right? Okay, I'm gonna clear this out. So write down whatever you need to. All right, here it goes. Let's take a look at another simple problem involving absolute value functions. Okay, little multiple choice. For that function, which of the following is the value of f of one? Show the calculation that leads to your answer. See if you can do this, see what you understand. Try not to use your calculator, you shouldn't need to. Pause the video now and take a few minutes to answer this question. All right, let's go through. Well, we've already reviewed function notation in this lesson, but I don't think that it hurts to continue to harp on it. If I see something like f of 1, what that means is that wherever there's an x in this formula, I'm going to put in a 1 now. Now, the real question is, how do we deal with this, right? Well, the way that we deal with things going on inside the absolute value is that we sort of assume that there's a parenthesis in here, and I have to do all of this first before I do the absolute value. So some students will say, well, the absolute value of 1 is 1, and the absolute value of negative 4 is 4, but that's not the way that we want to look at it. What we're going to do is 1 minus 4, which gives me negative 3, but I still have those absolute value bars there. All right, I haven't done the absolute value yet. Now I'll do it. So the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, and I'll get 3 plus 7, which is 10. So my correct choice is 1. Hopefully you got that. All right, that's it. That's all we're going to do with absolute value right now. Okay, now we're going to move on to a different type of function which has something to do with linear. All right, so step functions are one of my favorite functions that are related to linear. Now, they're really all about piecewise functions. I hope you kind of remember a little bit about piecewise functions. Those were functions that were defined differently depending on the values of x's, uh, the value of x that we had as the input. The key here is that a step function is a piecewise function consisting of horizontal line segments. So we might have a little one coming in here, then another one, then another one, and another one. Now, piecewise functions um, that are step functions don't have to have these horizontal lines all the same length or of all of the same sort of like jump size, but they could be. In fact, if I was trying to model, let's say, the profile of a staircase or a bunch of steps, then the steps probably would have the same length and the same jumps, but they don't have to. So let's jump right in and play around with a step function. All right, take a look at exercise four, where I've given you the formula f of x equals, ah, that keeps happening to me. There's my pen. All right, so f of x equals all of this. Now, the first thing I want to be comfortable with is just how to evaluate this, and it's a little bit weird looking. So let's, let's work in blue first. Let's take a look at f of zero. 
Now remember, that's as always the input. Now if I want to figure out what the output is, I have to look at this formula and figure out where zero lies. Well here it is, and lies right in there. And the way this formula looks is very strange. It's well, f of x is equal to two. Not two times x, not two plus x, just two. So f of zero is two, right? In fact, the way that I want to interpret this formula, let me just kind of erase this so that you can see it a little bit better, is that any value of x that lies in this interval, the y-coordinate will be 2. That's why it's a horizontal line segment, right? y equals 2 is the equation of a horizontal line. So, for instance, if I go over to, let me just circle that in blue, and this in blue, if I go to x equals 2, which clearly falls between 0 and 5, then the output will also be 2. So that would give me the point 2, 2. 4, x equals 4, right? It lies between 0 and 5. So the output's also 2, so we have 4, 2 as a point. On the other hand, for all values of x between 5 and 10, including the 5, including the 10, our output is 6. So when we have an input like 5, then the output here is 6, giving us the point 5, 6. Likewise, when we have an input of 7, our output's also 6, giving me the point 7, 6. And when our input is 10, our output's also 6, giving us the point 10, 6. Let me plot these points on the grid, right? Letter B asks us to graph the function. So for instance, 0, 2 is right there. 2, 2 is right there. 4, 2 is right there. Let me go in red here. 5, 6 is right there. 7, 6 is right there. 10, 6 is right there. So you can probably see why we've got horizontal lines going on here, right? This is definitely a horizontal line. Now the question is how, that didn't, that wasn't horizontal. How far does that horizontal line stretch? Well, it stretches all the way up to, but not including 5. So we have to have an open circle there. The other one actually starts at 5, and ends at 10. All right, so we have that nice step function. No open circle here, right? That The 10 actually applies there, unlike here where the flop five doesn't apply. So there's a very simple step function for you, okay? The formulas can look very, very confusing, but they really are just a bunch of horizontal lines, y equals two, y equals six, etc. cetera. All right, I'm gonna clear the text out, so pause the video now. Copy down anything you need to. All right, here we go. Let's keep moving on. Step functions actually come up a lot in the real world. I mean a lot. And a really good example of which is when you're talking about being admitted to a park or a movie theater or something like that where the cost might depend on your age. So let's take a look at exercise five. At a local amusement park, the park charges an admission based on age. Okay, graph the amount of money a person would have to pay for admission based on their age. Remember that someone who is one day short of four years old can still consider themselves three and under. So this is really kind of cool. Um, what color am I in now? Red? Yeah, let's stick with red. That's okay. And there's a little red dot. All right, so three and under, it's free. So obviously if you're zero, the cost is nothing. If you're one, the cost is nothing. If you're two, the cost is nothing. If you're three, the cost is nothing. Now, if you're four, you're gonna start getting charged, but remember, even if you're right in here, you still can consider yourself three. So everywhere all the way up to four, it's free. But once you are four years old, then you're gonna be charged four dollars, right? And then when you're five years old, you're gonna be charged $4, and six years old, $4, and seven, $4, and eight, $4. And even when you're eight and a half, you're gonna be charged $4. And eight and three quarters, you're gonna be charged $4, right? It's only when you're nine 
So it's all four dollars in here. It's only when you're nine that it suddenly goes up to eight dollars. Wait, oh, there it is. Sorry, I just I skipped over a second. There you go. Now it seems kind of weird. It seems like you should almost put it up here. But remember, I mean, if you're eight and a half, right, and you go to this movie theater or this local amusement park, and they say, "How old are you?" You're gonna be like, "I'm eight. Because I want to, I want to be charged the lower price, right? Uh oh, that was weird. Um, let's get that off of there. Maybe uh, get myself a little eraser, and it's gone. And back to the pen. So let's keep graphing, right? So as soon as you're nine, that's when you go up to eight bucks. And ten, you're at eight. Eleven, you're at eight. Twelve, you're at eight. 13, 14, 15, 16, all the way up to 17, but not right at 17, right? Because when you're 17 or older, now you're up at 12. And that's right here. And really, because it's 17 or older, right? We should have a little error there. That's a great example of a step function in the real world, right? It's not like it's doing this, it's not doing this. It's, hey, there's a constant price of free. Then it jumps up to a constant price of $4. Then it jumps up to a constant price of $8. Then it jumps up to a constant price of $12. All right. And many things work like this in the real world. All right. So I'm going to clear this out. And then we'll finish up the lesson. All right. Great. Let's do it. So today, we saw two types of functions that are sort of based on our linear work. Absolute value functions, which are really two lines kind of connected like this, but at a V, all right? And then step functions, which are a bunch of horizontal line segments, right, that kind of like either go up or they go down. Or they can do both. You can have one kind of come along, then go up, and go back down, etc. Okay? For now, let me thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.